acephysics.org. Yes, let's do physics. acephysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. Hello, today I'm gonna to do a quick presentation and discuss what's an electric field. Electric fields are important in physics. Let's learn about them. Before I talk to you about the electric field, let's briefly discuss the gravitational field. Hi, go full screen for a minute. Let me pick up my mic. Quality is better when I talk into the mic. Mic check, one, two, one, two. It's Dr. Hudis, math and physics is all I do. Every location near the surface of the earth has a gravitational field, right? There, in that little space there, there's a gravitational field. Now you say, well, how do I know there's a gravitational field there? That's because if I put something there, here's a Perrier bottle, and I let go of it, ow, that hurt my foot, it falls. And when it falls, that's a experimental verification that there's a gravitational field. And if I put something anywhere in space, near the surface of the Earth, it's gonna fall. And so we say that there's a field everywhere around the surface of the earth. And why is there a field? There's a field because if you put a mass at any location near the surface of the earth, that mass drops downward. That's the concept. It, some things in physics don't need to be complicated. This shouldn't be terribly complicated. There's, it's not like the field just appears. The field was there even before I put, before I put a mass right here. If I take this mass, I'm not gonna drop my mouse, even though it's kind of a crappy mouse. If I take this and I let go of it, it's gonna fall and it will fall regardless of where I put it. That's a gravitational field. All right, I'm going to um, remove my face now. Bye now. A field is a force per unit mass. That means if you put a mass at any location near the surface of the Earth, that mass is going to feel a force. There's a formula for the gravitational field. The formula is Newton's gravitational constant G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, times the mass of Earth, divided by the radius squared, where the radius goes from the center of Earth to um, whatever location it is that you're interested in finding the gravitational field. And the units of the gravitational field are newtons per kilograms. That's what it is. If you understand this, you understand basically everything. The idea is that near the surface of the Earth, there's a field at every location. That field exists whether there's a mass placed there or not. If you place a mass there, that field puts a force on the mass. That is the concept of what a gravitational field is. And this is what a gravitational field for the ball of Earth that we live on looks like. Now let's discuss what an electric field is. First of all, there are positive charges and negative charges that exist in the world. This is a discovery of physics. Science has discovered things over the past 400 years, and one of these important discoveries is that there's positive and negative charges. These pictures are fundamental. These pictures show what the electric field for a point charge looks like. What is a point charge? A point charge is either one single charge, like one single proton or one single electron, or it could be a group of charges in kind of a small point in space on a very tiny conductor, for example. If those charges are in a small volume of space, ideally a sphere, but if it's small enough, it doesn't matter, then that's what we call a point charge, and those charges create an electric field. And these two pictures are what that electric field looks like, and you must have those pictures in the back of your mind always when you're dealing with electric fields because everything is derived from these two pictures. The electric field for a positive point charge is these arrows that point away. There's a formula for it that we will get to in a second. And the electric field is a force per unit charge. The gravitational field was a force per unit mass. This is a force per unit charge. If I were to take a positive charge and put it right here at this location in space, that positive charge, sorry, that positive charge would have a, fo a force on it that would point off radially in this direction. If I were to take a positive charge and put it right here at this location in space, that positive charge would have a force on it that would point to the left. If there was no positive charge at this location in space, there would still be an electric field there, which is a force per charge. The electric field exists even when the charge is not located there. If I were to take a mass and put it right here, the mass would feel no electric force because the electric force is a force between charges, not between masses. The gravitational force is a force between masses. This is the electric field for a negative point charge, and it just points radially inward 
a positive point charge points radial out, outward. If I were to put a positive charge here, that positive charge would feel a force downward. The formula for the electric field comes from Coulomb's law, and the formula for the electric field for a point charge is kq over r squared. The units are newtons per coulomb. k is a constant. It's 9 times 10 to the 9th. It's the same always. q is the value of the charge that's at the center. That's the point charge. That's, that's the value of the charge that you're talking about. The units of charge are coulombs. See that the electric field is proportional to Q divided by R squared. So the electric field drops off as one over R squared. As you move farther away from the charge, the electric field gets smaller as smaller. Let's look at an example of how to calculate the electric field. What is the electric field at point P, a distance three meters away from a uh, negative charge of value negative 11 nanocoulombs? Here is a charge. This is a point charge. It's some small distribution of charge. It has a value of negative 11 nanocoulombs. There's some location P in space, which is three meters away from that charge. What is the electric field at that point? First, the magnitude of the electric field, the formula is KQ over R squared. K is a constant. It's always the same. Q is going to be the charge, point charge. That's going to be the value of the charge. And in this case, that's negative 11 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs, and you divide it by r squared. r is the distance from the charge to the point in space. That's 3, so 3 squared, and this tells us that the electric field is negative 11 newtons per coulombs. That's the magnitude. It has a negative number. Technically, magnitude is positive, but that really doesn't give us the direction. The direction is inward, um, and so we know that that's the answer to this problem. Now let's talk about finding the electric field from more than one point charge. What is the direction of the electric field at the center of each box? Here's a black box, and here's a negative charge and a negative charge. Those are in that proximity. And then these, these examples are isolated. So here's an isolated black box. It's separate from the one to the left and the one to the right. And there are two positive charges. And then here's another box. And I say, what is the electric field at the center of this box when there's a positive charge here and a negative charge here? Everything you need to know about electric fields is on this slide. One is the electric fields of point charges look like these two pictures. These two pictures are the pictures that show you the electric field of a point charge. And the second idea is superposition, which means if I want to find the electric field at some point in space, I need to add up the electric field from all the point charges near that point and combine them together. That's everything you need to know about electric fields. And then what an electric field is, is that it's a force per charge. That's the whole thing. That's the whole shebang bang so you may want to pause the video and see if you can determine the direction of the electric field. There's going to be two electric fields at the center of this box, one from the positive charge on the left pointing up this way, one from the positive charge on the right pointing up in this direction. And then at the center of this box, there's a, an electric field pointing up this way and an electric field pointing down in this direction. So the net electric field for each one of these charges is the red arrow. And so that's that's it. That covers... These are the concepts. Doing the problems might be a little more complicated, but every concept you need in an electric field is that, elect is that point charges create an electric field that looks like this. And if you want to find the electric field at a given point in space, you find that by adding up all the electric fields from every point charge near that point and then get a net. It's a vector. You have to get a net electric field in vector form. So this red arrow is the net vector sum of these two arrows. This red arrow is the net vector sum of these two arrows. And this red arrow is the net vector sum of these two, how this works. Why do we care about calculating electric fields? Well, for one, engineers are constantly engineering electronic devices that you use every day. And to do this, they have to model and create electric fields that will allow them to make devices that work in the way that they want their devices to work. Inkjet printers are, there's so many examples. One example is an inkjet printer. A 3D printer also uses electric fields. Many inkjet printers use electric fields to control the movement and deposition of ink droplets onto paper, creating the printed image. Um, electrostatic motors, there are motors that use electric fields to create forces and generate motion without the need for electromagnetic induction. Um, electric fields are used in biology and medicine. There's so many examples. One of numerous examples is the use of strong electric field pulses in electro operations to improve the insertion of drugs into tumors and DNA into cell nuclei. Um, electric fields are used to model and understand lightning. The, um, the applications are, are basically infinite. Um, 
when we're talking about lightning, there are rain clouds. The rain clouds have charge separation within the rain clouds. As of 2023, it's not fully understood the mechanism of why the charge separates within a rain cloud. But the charge does separate. And once the charge is separated, it creates electric fields. And those electric fields lead to lightning. Lightning is fully understood. It's just the separation of charges within the clouds that are not understood. Weather scientists model and predict the behavior of weather, weather patterns. And they certainly use electric fields when they're modeling lightning. In our world, charges don't just come in single point charges. Charges come in conglomeration of charges that have varying shapes and distributions. And so in what humans are interested in is modeling the real world and understanding the real world. And so in our world, we care about charge distributions. Yes, the main fundamental law is that point charges have this electric field, but the electric fields that we care about are many point charges put together. We solve problems in physics, solve for what the electric field looks like for a continuous charge distribution. An example of this could be a plate. Let's say there's a plate. This plate has charge all over it. That means if this is a positive plate, that there are positive point charges all over this charge and they're evenly distributed. And if I wanted to find the electric field at this point P, I'd have to add up the electric field from all the point charges and it points upward. And this is, I'll work, on, I'll work these problems out on an upcoming slide. The point of the matter is, we care about finding the electric field of charge of charge distributions because that's actually the way that we find charges in the world. We don't find single electrons just hanging out alone. We find groups of charges together. And we also, if we want to design or engineer a device, we don't just use one single charge. That device, the way that we create an electric field in a device is by making a plate and charging up that plate or making a wire and charging up that wire in such a way that it produces an electric field that's useful for our application. And that's never with one single charge. And so what we're interested in doing is calculating the electric field from a configuration, from a, a distribution of many, of many charges. And ultimately what it, what's happening is we're taking the electric field from all of the point charges on any one of these objects and adding up the electric field. Here's a quick summary. The electric field of a point charge is given by the picture and formulas to the right. This is the electric field of a point charge. You have to memorize that. This is the formula for the electric field for a point charge. To calculate the electric field of a set of discrete point charges or a continuous charge distribution, you use superposition and add up the fields from all the individual charges. In the upcoming presentation, I will solve many example problems.